All right, welcome to our next episode of In a Car with IPR. I'm here with my very good friend and IPR trusty colleague, Meryl McDonald. Hi, Meryl. Hi, Tina. I'm so glad you're here. I'm really excited. So we are in Wisconsin, and so we're at Mary Bud Farm. So Meryl, why don't you tell us a little bit about this very special place? Okay, thanks. So Mary Bud Farm is a 108-acre horse farm that... Um, my family and I own and that we use in conjunction with my firm, Gag and McDonald, to do leadership retreats. And so we do a lot of leadership retreats with the horses, which is part of what we're seeing behind us right here. And, and you came to participate, which is awesome. And the farm has been in our family now for just a couple of years. We actually moved from a different farm to a better location. And um, I'm very excited about really having everybody here to enjoy it. Yeah, so why don't you tell me a little bit about the leadership retreats? What is the overall goal, the passion? It's like, what is the purpose of what we're doing here? Well, so we do a variety of retreats, which are all around helping leaders really get in touch with themselves and, and really become a better leader. But this particular situation is working with the horses. And the reason we use the horses is that horses are prey animals and they're very, very sensitive to energy and they live in their bodies and they live in a herd and they are always thinking and watching and being aware of what's coming at them. So they're a wonderful foil for how we show up. And so we can work with leaders and do things such as showing you how your energy is actually affecting another or your communication or lack of communication is affecting getting the results that you want? Or are you really clear? You may be saying the words but not living it in your body. And we saw some examples of that, right? We saw someone trying to move the horse around the ring and she said, in my head, I wanted the horse to move, but I, I didn't really, and the horse wasn't moving. So it's just a very interesting way for leaders to learn. And we're always looking for new ways to do things because we've been in this space for 24 years and trying to continually pioneer and what's next and what can we do so the horses is at the next juncture. It's really amazing and I this is my second day here and it's been just a just incredible. I can't even describe the experience working with the horses. And you're right, you know, it's it definitely uh, the horse they're so present and I think it's a really good uh, lesson for all of us. So who's sort of facilitating these programs and sort of what is the itinerary when people get here? So um, it varies. So this program we're facilitating with two of my Gagan colleagues, Mary Kay Durant and Morgan Mannion, who's also my daughter. <laughs> and so they've been facilitating the process and um, but we've worked with different facilitators over time as well. And so what people do, there's a whole variety of exercises we can do. What we've done for this one is for putting an individual in, in a round pen with the horse. A round pen is just a big round corral, 70 feet in diameter. And the idea is, can you move the horse in the direction you want it to go, at the speed you want it to go, on, only with your energy. The horse isn't on a line. So the idea is how do you learn to drive enough and back off enough and moderate your energy and moderate and send um, direction with your clarity so the horse knows what it's doing. The example behind us right now is we have three people working together who can't talk because they're in the herd and they are trying to maneuver a horse through a series of obstacles. And you know, and what you start to see is there's confusion between the three people, and then there's also confusion for the horse. The horse, and you, and you often see it, right? The horse just stops and goes, "What are we doing?" That happened to me. <laughs> we both stopped and I'm like, one of us has got to do something. So. Yeah. <laughs> and you also just learn a lot about trust. And um, you know, we've seen how like really working to engender trust with the horse. And it's incredible, and, and you saw this too. Once that happens, the horse will follow you without a lead line. You can walk the horse all around the ring. Oh, well, they didn't tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not following me. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your firm, Gag and McDonald. I know that when we went through our, we went through a whole strategic uh, plan process a couple of years ago, you were also, your team were so instrumental in helping us. And that helped us sort of set a course for success from then on. I mean, we still, it's really done a lot for our transformation. And you all were very pivotal in that. So tell us a little bit about Gag and McDonald. 
Okay, so Gig McDonald is um, 24 years old. We're a woman-owned firm, and our focus is really on transformation and change. So we work with leaders who are really trying to get more of something, less of something, or something different, right? And um, we talk about our space being really the human struggle of change, because in all transformations, companies pretty easily get the Gantt charts and the plans and the process, but the problem is, they have trouble getting people's hearts and minds wrapped around where we want to go or why we want to go there. And leaders have difficulty really expressing kind of what they intuitively know they're trying to do, but they can't really express it in a way that helps others see it. So that's a lot of the work we do. So we do a lot in mergers and acquisitions, business transformation, a lot of digital transformation right now, you would imagine. Um, and so strategy shifts, leadership shifts, those are the types of things we do. Well, thank you. That was amazing. And thank you for all your hard work that you've done with IPR and as a member of our board. Uh, but you ready to go to the next site? Sure. All right. Off we go. Okay, Meryl, you want to tell us who we're with? Yeah, we're here with True Blue. And his name's Blue because he's a blue roan, as you can see from this silver coloring throughout his coat here. He's a very nice horse. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's a guy. And you said he was a research horse. Yes, he's very into research. He looked. Yes, he's look. Like, he's, did you say research? Yes, he's like, this is my thing. <laughs> oh, I love him. So I want to, um, it's great. I feel like we're having like, a, there's a, there's two participants. Yeah, there you here. go. Yep. We are here in front of the barn under a beautiful tree. I'm just going to stay here and never go home. <laughs> um, so we have a study with PR News, and we asked some questions about the structure of the commons function and what we're seeing in the future and what we've seen in the past. And overall, uh, a lot of our respondents said that they've seen an increase in the number of responsibilities handed to the commons function. But what they're anticipating in the future are increased responsibilities, but not overall headcount and budget increases that go with the responsibilities. So what are your sort of thoughts around that and what are you seeing? Yeah, we're seeing this a lot too. And a lot of our clients are talking about this, that with COVID, their value became even more apparent and the demand is even greater. Um, some are, be, are actually becoming very successful at increasing their budgets and their staff. And I think the ones who are, the ones who are very clear on the impact that they're having on the business they're tying everything they do to the results that the, the C-suite wants, not activities, and that they're staying clear in their own, and we talked about clarity earlier, their own clarity that they have a right to have resources if people want a return. And this is one of the things I think we struggle with often as communicators is that we want to keep producing and pleasing and helping the business at our own expense. And we have to take care of ourselves as well, because one of the things that also we're seeing is change fatigue at a huge, huge level. And there are many things you can do to mitigate change fatigue, but you can't ever resolve the fact that there's too much work to be done. At some point, you've got to put a stop to that. Yeah. So the way to stop it is to get more resources or get more budget and that means saying no. And the way to say no is to have a very clear strategy so that you can say, this is, our, you have funded this, you have not funded that. Yeah, it seems like it also thins the value of communication. Because if you don't have the resources or headcount or budget, you're not gonna get the outcomes that you need. No, that's right. And then people point and say it's a communication problem. Well, no, it's not, it's a leadership problem. Yeah, I love that. So I'm here with Meryl and two of her friends. <laughs> That's right. This is Black Magic and Noble. <laughs> They're beautiful. Do you want to just say maybe what type of horses they are and uh, what their role is here on the farm? Sure. So this is Noble. He's a spotted draft horse, six years old. And Black Magic is a half Arabian. He's about seven. And their role is, well, number one, they're our family 
part of our family herd and just horses we enjoy. But we use them for an equine leadership experience. And what they really help us do is help leaders connect with themselves in terms of their energy, their intent, their clarity. And Tina, you've been going through the program. I have. It's been really fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> So you also have a Let Go and Lead podcast. I do. It's fantastic. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So Let Go and Lead, the concept of it is that for many years as I was working with corporate leaders, I noticed that they often didn't really show up in the way that you'd like to see them show up. And a lot of it was because they had misguided ideas of what a leader is. And many of them believe that a leader is a hero. The leader has to have all the answers. The leader needs to give all the direction. And so many times, particularly with companies that are going through a lot of change, they don't have, leaders don't have the answers, so they just wouldn't show up. <laughs> and so I began thinking, what's all this about? And a lot of it's about the idea that we are in control, which is such a fallacy. We're not in control of anything. Like right now, he's dragging me right across the <laughs> field. Come here, back up. And um, so what I decided to do was really interview people from all walks of life around what does it mean to really lead and what does it take and what do you need to let go of? And so now we've done probably almost 100 interviews and the themes are pretty strong. You need, leaders need to let go of control. Leaders need to be not the hero, but the host really pulling people together and asking the questions and, and encouraging people to collaborate and find the answers together. And that leaders need to let go of their ego because it's often what we perceive about ourselves that's blocking everything we're doing. And, and again, that's what we've been exploring today too, right? It's, you know, when you get out there, you have to let, just become vulnerable and let go of what what you look like to others or what somebody might be thinking and the great thing about these guys is they're not thinking anything about us. They just respond to the energy we put out. Yeah, I just noticed even in the ring, it was perfect let go and lead and, uh, you know, leading a horse, leading a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. It's yeah, well, there, the yeah, there, right? there you go. So, yes. All right, you're ready to go to the next spot? Yeah, sounds good. All right, here we are back with Meryl in a new place. Where are we? We're on the Fairy Hill. Fairy Hill, F-A-I-R-Y. So yes. you said your daughter's named it Fairy Hill. They Why? named it the Fairy Hill because um, they both love um, various like mystical and magical stories. And we feel this is a very spiritual place. And um, the hill just has a lot of surprises and serendipity, and that's why. And it also kind of goes nowhere. This is like <laughs> a road to nowhere. All right. So, what is your uh, favorite word? Smitten. Smitten. Oh, I love it. Yes. And what that's what smitten, smitten means. <laughs> <laughs> You're smitten with smitten. <laughs> I love the word because one, I love how it sounds. I do the just ring of it. And I love what it means. And I think when you're smitten, you're giving yourself joyfully to something. And that's how I try to live. Not, I don't always live that way, but so it's always been a really fun word for me. That's great. What about your least favorite word? My least favorite word, fine. Like if you mean because people use it different ways? Yeah, like, not? like, what do you think of this? It's fine. You know, and um, you've probably heard, you know, the whole, like, people use fine as a almost dismissal of things. So that really bothers me. And, you know, there is an a acronym for fine, which I won't say the first <laughs> word. <laughs> and the others are insecure, neurotic, and emotional. I love it. We can, we can believe it in it. Yeah. Um, so what about your favorite book or a, a great book you've read recently? Let's see. I think um, one of my favorite books is Black Beauty, which I guess I'm thinking about it right now because we're here just, with the horses just, and yeah. the, the story. <laughs> but a more contemporary book, um, The Secret Life of Bees. Oh, I yes. Love. The Sumon Kid. Yes. That's a great book. Yeah. 
Yeah, she has some good it's ones. Great. What about music? What do you like? To listen music. To? I like all kinds of music. Um, I don't really have a favorite. Really? Yeah. So right now, if you could choose anybody to listen to, who would it be? Sure. Oh man, Cher is fantastic. I love Cher, she's and I've great. I've always loved her because I love her range of music. But I just love that Cher was always Cher. So if you could do any job other than what you're doing today, what would it be? Um, I don't know. I love my job. I have to say, so I'm having trouble. Well, one reason I love my job is I get to hack my job to be anything I want because I own my own company, right? <laughs> So, um, wrong question but, for Meryl. <laughs> well, but that is the, you know, I'm really lucky that way. Like I can do things like incorporate horses into a business. I know that or, actually is what you would do, yeah, if, but now you're doing it. But so. I don't want to do that full time. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. So yeah, sorry. I, love that. I feel like that's a great inspiration for everything <laughs> of what we've done here today. So it's been great. Um, okay. What would you not want to do? What would I not want to do? Um, I would not want to be an accountant. I would not want to be, um, I would not want any function that's about like controlling other things because that I'm not good at that. I don't have any energy for that. I like to build things and let them go. <laughs> so anything that was um, a lot of the really important things in business of, of rigor and discipline is not really what I enjoy. That has been a consistent theme through all our uh in a car with IPRs, I feel like, with yeah. people they're like, don't want to do. All right, anything to close us out that we should, that I forgot to ask you that I should have asked you, besides what I'm going to ask you later? Well, I don't over. know what you're going to ask me later. <laughs> but I, um, I, so I do have to say, and um, if I, in case I don't get a chance with another question, I am just so blown away by everything that IPR is doing, and I'm so grateful to be a trustee and have the opportunity <laughs> to work with your leadership. It's really been fantastic. And just the whole role and space that IPR plays in driving better measurement and metrics, I, it's so important to our careers and to our field. Thank you, Meryl. That means a lot coming yeah. from you. So thank you. And look, we're hugging again. It's post-COVID yeah. and we're hugging again. <laughs> so this wraps up our episode of In a Car with IPR. Thanks for joining us. If you like it, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you soon. Bingo. Thank you for watching this episode of In a Car with IPR. Want to make a tax-deductible contribution to support this series and fund research in the profession? Please visit us at instituteforpr.org slash contribute.